Thank you. Um, welcome, everybody. It sounds like we have a really good audience, so we're pleased to have a good uh, outcome and people showing up for the class. Um, I just want to welcome all of you guys. I'm Kara Christofferson with Gartner Studios. Uh, again, we're excited to have you join for what is day 11 of the 12 days of card making. Um, today, we're going to focus on wax, wax stampers, all things sort of the basics, maybe a little safety measures and how to do some great card making with wax and stamping. Um, but before we get started, just really quickly, a little bit about Gartner Studios. Um, our mission statement at Gartner Studios is to ins inspire people everywhere through stylish products and creative ideas. We've been doing that for about 20 years. Um, so we've been long and hard at work for quite some time. Um, what is a fun fact is um, we've been working and partnering with Michaels for about 18 of those 20 years as a very creative and craft innovator that Michaels always has been. Um, they actually were one of the very first retailers to believe in our brand and believe in our products. So um, we certainly thank Michaels for all of their support over the years. And it really only comes down to all of you who are watching, everybody walking into the stores at Michaels or online buying our products. Um, it is through the support of all of you who love our products and everything in Michaels that helps us stay in business, quite frankly, some of the small and mid-sized companies out here that we're the makers just like you guys are, just in a different way on a, on a bigger global scale. So thank you to all of you and obviously um, thank you to Michaels. So we definitely pour all of our love and all of our energy and commitment to every single piece of product we do. Um, paper has always been very core to who we are at Gartner Studios. Um, it's always been very important, but we do have other products within our product line. Um, one of the areas that's really near and dear to us um, and our starting point is wedding products. So as well, we partner with uh, Michaels um, with the wedding products. We have everything that he or she needs from the paper elements, the invitation, um, as well as tons of mixed materials on tabletop decor, uh, hanging decor, the guest book, um, all the things beautiful to make a perfect wedding day. Um, we have a great partner in Style Me Pretty, which is a national brand and an amazing, um, well-known blog and editorial site that helps us come up with great content and great products. So what is great is that you can find them in-store exclusively at Michael's. Um, again, they've been a fantastic partner of ours in the wedding category. You can also find the products uh, um, on michaels.com as well as stylingpretty.com. Uh, another area of our business that's super exciting um, that you guys should all check out um, is we love to add um, life to work. And that is our tagline for our Russell and Hazel brand. Um, Russell and Hazel is a phenomenal brand. It's, it's beautiful and aesthetic, um, but it's also very, very functional. Um, it does journals, we do planners, beautiful acrylic organization, mostly for the desktop, but people will use it in their kitchens and their bathrooms. And I would say for all of you on this call, the clarity of the acrylic and the functionality could be an amazing way to organize from a craft perspective. So I hope you check it out. And then finally, celebrations is a big category for us in general. We really believe in celebrating all of life's events, wedding being one of them, but every single season, every single birthday, um, with wrapping paper, and gift bags, and greeting cards, um, paper party wear, lots of decors. So we have a broad range of different things that we do here in that side of the walls of the company. So today, uh, we are coming to you live from our Gartner Studios corporate office. Um, it's a fantastic place and a fantastic space. Um, we are really pleased to be located in a beautiful little town. It's called Stillwater, Minnesota. Um, and we are on the very eastern side of Minnesota. So if I could throw a stone far enough across the St. Croix River, it would end up in Wisconsin. So um, Stillwater happens to be the birthplace of Minnesota. Um, I like to tell people it feels a little like Norman Rockwell-ish town here. Um, lots of antiquing and, and a fun place to be able to, to live and quite frankly for our team to work. Lots of things to be inspired by. Um, so we are here live with all of you and can't wait to get started. Um, again, we really hope um, that you enjoy the class today. Um, we truly believe here at Gartner Studios that there is real power in the written word, um, the ability to express yourself um, through card making and through many things that we make here. In addition to card making, the power of the written word, but then your artistic expression. It just means a little bit more for family and friends and, and everyone that receives those notes. So we really pride ourselves all day when we think about making our products, how we can do that better. 
So as the CEO of Gartner Studios, um, I wear a lot of hats, but um, my favorite hat to wear is working with all of the people here. We have so many talented people that end up making the products hit the shelves. We have product managers, project managers, business analysts, art production people, photographer, videographers, um, amazing team of people sourcing. Um, we have a lot of people that live under the walls of this company that make it all come to life. But today um, you get the pleasure of working with um, two of our most lovely uh, designers on our, what I would say a pretty broad design team. Um, I am not as good of a crafter as they are or a maker. Um, that's what they do well. So everybody has a spot here at the organization. So today um, you're gonna have an opportunity to meet Hannah and Jill. Um, again, they're two of our designers here at Gartner Studios. And they're again gonna walk you through the basics of wax, um, all the fun tricks, maybe a few tips, and then walk through two really amazing holiday um, projects for you guys. So um, thank you again um, for joining the class and quite frankly, thank you for um, shopping at Michael's and making all the things that we love come to life um, through purchasing the products. So I'm gonna have Hannah jump in to the screen here. Um, so everyone, I'm gonna hand you over. This is Hannah, um, again, uh, amazing, talented artist. So she's gonna be one of two that is gonna walk through the first project with you guys. You are in amazing hands with Miss Hannah. So she also helps with a lot of our wedding products. So there's that too. Thanks everybody. Oh, thanks Kara. So like she said, I'm gonna be walking you through the first two parts of our class today. So we're gonna start with our wax seal basics and then we'll move on to our first card project. So with that, I'm gonna get my workstation set up. So let's switch to our hands view here. So I'm just gonna walk through some of the supplies that you'll need today to start with our wax seals. So I just have a candle, a little stack of matches. You'll need something to light your candle. I have a scissors. I also have a cautionary uh, cup of water just because we're working with fire. You never know, fire and lots of paper. So better to be on the safe side. A kitchen fire extinguisher would also be a great thing to have nearby. I also have my metal stamper. I chose this pretty rose design to use today. We have our wax sticks and these are wax sticks. They come in a four pack and they have the wicks in the top already. So that's the specific kind of wax that we'll be using. I also have this little metal ruler that I'm just gonna use as a spatula. You could really use whatever you want to get your wax seal up off of the surface. Cause to practice, it really is a good idea to use a cutting mat like this so that if you mess up, you can kind of peel your seal off of the mat and then remelt it later so you don't waste any product. So there's a tip and a trick for you right off the bat. And then I wanna show you a little bit of inspiration before we get started. These are some seals that I've made in different colors with different stamps and different outcomes. If you're not super familiar with wax seals, you can get so many different looks with them. You can go really big with the wax and have it be really romantic and drippy. You can keep it kind of tight and pretty. So we're gonna explore all of those today and it does just take some practice to achieve the results that you want or the look that you're going for. So with that, let's make some wax seals. I'm just gonna scoot these off to the side. Open up my pack of wax. We'll get one stick out to start. And then get my stamper ready. Okay, so to begin, my first tip is, these wicks come at whatever length they come at, but as any good candle owner knows, trimming the wick on something that you're burning is a really important part of controlling the flame. So we don't need a ton of flame here. We just need enough to melt the wax. This also helps with soot control. Again, if you burn candles, you know, sometimes there's soot accumulation and that can happen on these sticks too, especially on the lighter colors. So we're gonna do everything we can so that that soot doesn't end up in our pool of wax and in our final seal. So we'll do everything we can to make it as pretty as we can by trimming our wick. So you can trim your wick down from about an eighth of an inch to a quarter of an inch. So we'll see how this length works for us. So I'm gonna start by lighting my candle. Okay. 
and we can get on with our first seal. So I'm gonna dip my seal into the candle and just get this going. There we go. So I'm just gonna hold this parallel to my working surface and drip directly onto my mat. You can see the wax starts to melt pretty quickly. It gets really shiny and it just kind of drips off the end. So I like to hold mine in two hands and slowly rotate that stick of wax so that we're burning as evenly as possible. This isn't super crucial, but you'll see if you hold it in one spot for too long, it can melt kind of unevenly, especially those corners. So I like to kind of tilt my flame and try and get it to burn a little bit more evenly. So you can see this is a bit more of a slow process. It's a little meditative. I think it would be nice to have a winter evening for you making all your wax seals for your holiday cards. Maybe light a few extra candles, really get in the spirit. You can just look at that drip going into the middle of your puddle. And this is also a part where you can start kind of forming the shape that you'd like your final wax seal to be. This isn't gonna be your final shape because pushing that stamper in really does change things. But if you're going for that perfect circle look, you can just keep dripping in the middle or you can go a little rogue and drip off to the edge a little bit and make more of an organic romantic shape. There are so many looks you can get with wax seals and there's a lot to explore here. So I'm just dripping off to the edge here and it's a good rule of thumb we counted in our testing phase for the size of wax stamper that we have, which is about three quarters of an inch. We counted it takes about 30 drips to get the size you want. So if you're someone who wants a hard and fast rule, count your drips, we'll get to about 30 and then see if that looks good to you. I'm just eyeballing it. I think part of the beauty of wax seals is that they're all different, they're all unique and quirky and it's really fun to embrace that. So you can just keep dripping until whenever you feel is right. You can even grab your stamper and hold it up next to your little puddle of wax to eyeball it a little better. And I think we're about good here. So I'm gonna blow my stick out, set that down. And you really should work pretty quickly by putting that stamper right on your wax. So it does start to cool pretty quickly and you don't have to leave your stamper there for long. I like to just wiggle it and it should come right out. So you shouldn't have any issues with sticking. I feel like in my research, I'd heard of people having problems with that, but I've never had a problem with our wax. So that's our first wax seal. I think aesthetically, I would probably remelt this one and use it again, just so that I'm using my product because I'd really like to have more of a rim on this edge and this edge but I'm gonna let that dry for now and keep going. So let's try one more time. Here we go, just a little flame here. So one good thing to note as you're learning your wax sealing basics and thinking about what projects you might wanna use your wax seals on is knowing that we've gotten about six to eight, again, it really depends, six to eight seals per wax stick. So if you wanna do these in bulk, I know a lot of people like to do them for weddings or like really nice party invitations or announcements. That will help you logistically to understand how many packs of sticks that you might need to purchase. But again, if you're using a different size stamper or you're going for a really thick, really drippy romantic look, you might need a little bit more or if you like yours really tight and really thin and small, you'll get more out of your sticks. It's also good to know if you're planning to use these for mail, you'll probably have to get them hand canceled and deliver them like directly to the post office, pay a little bit extra for postage, just to make sure that we're not jamming through uh, the post office sorting machines. These can be, again, thick and rigid, and it can be just enough to throw off their machines, and we don't wanna do that. So keep that in consideration if you're actually putting something through the mail. But for our holiday cards today, we really recommend that you hand deliver them or put them on top of a gift that you would already be delivering by hand. It really gives you that extra little something, and it's a really fun process. Okay, I think I'm ready for my second go. This one's looking a little organic, but we'll see 
we'll see how the stamp settles into it. I also like to just swish my stamp around a little bit and then let it settle in so that I can get more of that pooling where I want it to. So I don't know how well you can see this, but I can see that the parts that are pooled out here are still looking really shiny. So I don't think those are dry yet. So I'm just gonna let this fully dry on my mat, but I think my other one is good for now. So I'm just gonna take my ruler, use it as a little spatula to get it up off of my working mat. And there you go. That's one of my wax seals. Anna, do you want to give our viewers maybe a sneak peek as sure. to what projects we're going to be working on? Yes. Um, we'll finish the wax basics, but. Okay, so while that stamp dries, I'm going to show you the two cards that we'll be showing you how to make today. So you can pre-make your wax seals just like I was doing and then apply them to your project later. So that really just saves you from pouring your wax directly onto your card and then having an outcome that you don't love so much and kind of ruining your card. So we have a glam, the sparkle photo card. That's the project number one that I'll be showing you. And then later Jill will come in with this pretty farmhouse card that has an ornament on the front. So we'll look forward to showing you how to make those in a few minutes. Okay, this guy is looking a little more dry. So I'm gonna spatula that up and just move it out of the way for now. I'm also going to show you if you're feeling ambitious, how to pour directly onto an envelope because that is really my favorite way to use wax seals. It's the most traditional kind of old world way and I love sending mail like this. So I just have an envelope here and I'm going to use a different color of wax and a different stamper. So we've got a nice dark navy blue here which I think will look really pretty with this pearl envelope. And also I chose this fern design because Oops, the one that we were using before was a rose. So it doesn't really matter what way it ends up on your stamp. But now that we're stamping directly onto our envelope, our fern has a very clear up and down. So that's like another level up. Can we handle getting a straight stamp? So I have a little tip and a trick to show you how to get them a little bit straighter if you're, you have a stamp that has a clear up and down. So I'm just gonna start again by trimming my wick and then we'll get going. Okay, so when you're dripping directly onto your sheet of paper, you wanna get close, but not too close. I'm not gonna say I've lit an envelope on fire before, but I'm not gonna say I haven't. So <laughs> take that mistake as a word of caution for you. If you get a big puddle of wax and have your fire a little bit too close, you can set that pool of wax on fire. So again, that's why we recommend just being a little extra cautious and having some water on hand but it's really no more dangerous than a candle. Nothing to be afraid of. Just some words of caution that you can keep in mind as you're doing your first projects. So I'm just gonna keep dripping. You can see that I accidentally dripped an extra piece over here. So we're gonna use that as um, a word to go to our more organic look again and kind of connect the dots here. I think sometimes the ones that spill out and have a ton of wax can look the prettiest. So we'll go with that for this one. When you seal directly under a piece of paper or an envelope, it really does create an awesome seal. And they, I've never had one fall off. So that's a good thing to know. They're quite sturdy. I'd still seal my envelope the normal way, just so that you don't have to deal with wax kind of falling in between that envelope flap and the rest of the envelope, but they do provide a good seal that's really fun for the receiver to tear open. Okay, I think that's looking good. And for our fern, I've gone ahead and pre-marked, I'm not sure if you can see this, it's pretty shiny, but I've pre-marked with a pencil where 12 o'clock is on my stamp, so I can reference that as my top as I'm stamping my wax. There we go, that one floated around a little bit. But I think I do have a pretty good edge around my stamp this time, which is looking good. That blue wax feels like it melts a little different than the light blue. Just gonna take my stamper out. And there we have it. That's a pretty good fern. 
All right, so now that we know how to pre-make our wax seals and how to seal on an envelope, we're gonna move into our first project. So I'm just gonna clean up my workspace. And I also wanna ask our ladies on the edge <laughs> if we have any process questions that have come in that I can answer while I'm cleaning up my space. No questions? All right, good. That's good. I'm glad to hear that we're answering all the questions that you have. I think it really is just about experimenting. It helps to have someone walk through everything with you, but getting your hands on something really is the best way to do it. Okay, so let's move on to our glam project. So this is our card that we'll be making. It's this pretty photo card. Uh, you can use a pet like our example photo. You can do a family photo. This would be a great stand-in for a Christmas card if you're feeling ambitious and wanna handcraft all of your Christmas cards. You could save it with your most loved people that can really appreciate something handmade. So I'm gonna walk through the supplies that you'll need to make this card. So first we're using these pre-folded cards. We chose this nice subtle shimmer. This actually comes with matching cards and envelopes. So there are 10 of each in this pack. You'll also need some glitter paper. This is just a 12 by 12 big square of glitter paper that we'll be cutting down to fit onto our card. You'll also need a picture to put onto the front of your card. You can start with a five by seven, but we ended up trimming ours down to four and a half by five so that it can fit within our design. So you'll also need some adhesive foam squares, some double-sided tape, ribbon, which we're keeping with the glitter theme and using this thin glitter ribbon. Something that I really love about this ribbon and this sheet of paper, I have been working with them a lot lately and I don't have one speck of glitter on me. So if you're someone who loves the glitter effect but doesn't like the mess, these are great. And last but not least, we have a die pad and a stamp. This is a rubber stamp. We chose Be Joyful. It'll fit right on the bottom of our card and black ink for this. I'm just gonna let that sit over here ink side up so I don't get anything too dirty. All right. So I have my pieces all pre-made over here. So I'm going to shuffle all of my full pieces off. And let's start assembling our card. So I'm going to start with my folded card. And you'll notice that when you open your pack of folded cards, the fold isn't perfect. There's one edge that's a little bit longer than the other edge. And I like to find the shorter side and have that face down. So I have just the neatest, cleanest space to work with. So I'm gonna line that up on my cutting mat. If you have one of these, I would totally recommend using it because you can still eyeball, but also use the grid to make sure things are roughly centered. So I'm gonna start by attaching our sheet of glitter paper. We've already cut this down. It works great, especially if you're making more than one of these cards or a whole batch of them to work assembly line style and pre-cut all of your pieces. So that's what I've done here. So this is pre-cut to fit inside of our folded card centered at the top. So we're gonna have an even border around all of it except the bottom we will have that kind of Polaroid look with a little extra space so that we can fit our stamp. So I'm just gonna attach this to the front of the card with double-sided tape. I think it's so great to work with double-sided tape and paper projects instead of glue because it really eliminates the mess. And I find that it holds really, really well, just as well as glue ever would. So I usually like to put some tape in the corners, a little piece in the middle, just to make sure. And then I'll center this paper on top of our folded card. So I'm just going for about a quarter of an inch border around those three sides, and then about a half of an inch on the bottom. The other great thing about using double-sided tape on top of a shimmer card like this, which is a bit of a coated paper, 
is if you don't get this perfectly centered on the first try, it lifts pretty easily and you can reposition it a couple of times. You can still smooth it back down and it'll hold just fine. So that's a great perk too. All right, now that we've got that there, we're gonna prep our photo to go on top of our card. So this is probably the most tedious part of the process, but it's not too bad. So we're gonna attach our ribbon You'll need about 14 inches per card. And that also leaves you a little bit extra so you can trim your ends just right at the end. So I'm gonna start by finding the middle of my ribbon. I like to just fold it in half and crease so that I know where that is. And I'll turn my photo over and put that crease right with that middle grid line. And I'm also gonna have this about half of an inch down from the top of my card, just because I like how that looks. You go back in with my double-sided tape and just secure it. This part doesn't have to look very pretty. It's gonna be the back anyway, but we'll get a little neater on the front. All right, this is the part where if you have an extra set of hands or something to hold your ribbon down for you, that would be great. So I'm just gonna fold these over and kind of get an idea of where I want the ends of my ribbon to lay. So I want them to be about centered and then I like a little bit of crisscross a little bit of overlap. So I think about there looks good. So I'm just gonna let this one go. Actually, I'll let them both go for now. I feel like I need both hands with this tape. So I like to take my tape and this stuff tears down the middle usually pretty well. There we go. So this is what I want just because my ribbon is so thin. You could also just exacto knife it if your tape isn't tearing very well. I'm just gonna put this tape on this end and the same on the other side. Get rid of this extra little bit. And I'll just crisscross them about how I had it before. So you wanna make sure you have the tape kind of on the outer part of your ribbon so that it sticks to your photo because that'll hold better than if the ribbon is sticking to the ribbon. Okay, I think that's looking pretty good. I'm gonna come back later and trim up my ends once we have the wax seal on top. So I'll leave those for now. So next I'm gonna attach my photo to my card using these foam adhesive squares. You could just use the double-sided tape again, but I like the adhesive squares because they add a little bit of extra lift and dimension to your card. So I'm gonna use the big ones and I'm gonna use five of the big ones. We'll just put one in each of the corners. And that should fit right above your ribbon. If it doesn't, no big deal. Our foam actually came with two sizes. So you could use the smaller size or you could just cut down the squares so that they fit. And one for the middle, just so that it doesn't bow. Okay. I'll peel off all the little backs of these. And we're ready to place our photo. So again, we're just going for that even border of our glitter paper to show up around our photo. I think that looks pretty good. I'm just gonna press that into place. And now it's time for the wax seal. So we've got this red one with um, a stamp that looks a little bit like a poinsettia, which is a great nod to the holidays, especially with our more monotone card design. So I'm just gonna place that right in the middle. And I'm also gonna use double-sided tape for this. We found that it works and it works with this ribbon. Um, if your ribbon is wider or you find it's not sticking, you can totally use just your regular craft glue and that'll be just fine. Just don't use hot glue because it will melt your seal. Okay, now I'm gonna go back and trim the ends of my ribbon. I think I want them to look, I want them to look a little shorter and be just inside. And I like to do that angled cut. I feel like that always makes it look a little bit nicer. A sharp scissors is a really good thing to have for this. But go find the sharp part, there we go. Okay, 
So we just got one more step for this and that is the stamp. So I'm gonna go rogue and I'm just gonna stamp mine <laughs> and see how it turns out. Sometimes stamping can be a little bit finicky. So you can have a practice sheet of the same kind of paper that you'll be stamping on. Like I said, this coated shimmer paper is a little bit different to work with. The uncoated usually absorbs the ink pretty fast where it tends to sit on top of this. So just so you know what you're working with, it's good to do a little test run. Also, if you're not much of a stamper, which I am not, it's good to kind of go through the basics and remember how much pressure, how much wiggling or not wiggling you wanna do. So after a few tests, I'm just gonna go for it. I just wanna center this in that bottom open section of my card. Again, the grid mat is a lifesaver. And there it is, not bad. Okay, so the last step of this is letting your card dry completely. It might take a while, especially with this paper. So we would recommend just letting it sit overnight and then double checking it. You can also stamp the inside, which we did on our example card. No, we didn't. <laughs> <laughs> we had a different example card where you can put in, <laughs> we had a Merry Christmas. You can add a Merry Christmas stamp. You could do your Be Joyful again if you want to. You could just add a nice handwritten letter. So if you wanna do your stamping and you're a little nervous about stamping, feel free to start with this step first instead of last so that if you mess up on any or don't love the outcome, you don't have to use those pieces and then you won't have assembled your, your full card on one that you didn't like the stamp of. So with that, this is our first card. Now I am going to start cleaning up my station and also open up to any questions that might've come in during the card assembly. Any questions? I think we're good. All right, it looks good. So I'm gonna shuffle a lot of this stuff off and just prep the station for Jill, who's gonna come in with our second card design. It's out too. All right, you're welcome, Jill. Let me get this mat off the table for you so you can slide yours on. Thank you, Hannah. That was such a great project. Thank you for all your tips as well. Let me just make sure I've got everything. All right, thanks everyone for joining and for staying with us. I have another project to show you. This one is our farmhouse themed card. Um, this time we're using our wax seal to create an ornament shape on the front. So a slightly different use there just to give you a little range of what you can do. So I'm gonna walk you through our um, materials and then show you step-by-step -step how to make it. So let's go to the hands view. All right. Sorry, we were already there, I think. So I've used this 24 pack of uh, cards already, including the craft envelopes. They're pre-folded. So that's such a great time saver. Um, I've also got three different types of paper. I've got this craft paper, this white linen paper, and then the same silver glitter paper that Hannah was using. And those all come in a 12 by 12 sheet. So we'll cut them down to size for the project, but you'll get quite a few out of each sheet. So that's what those look like. Then we're going to use this haberdashery thread. Again, you'll get quite a few pieces from this. We cut it down to about four and a half inches per card. So lots of, lots of use out of that one floss, I think it's called. Um, next, we're gonna choose a ribbon. I've chosen this pretty red ribbon. I'm gonna use this for all of my designs, but you can definitely find a really wide selection at Michael's and you can mix it up if you wanna do a couple of um, different designs if you're doing a lot of cards. So that's nice to have them all together. Next, this one includes a stamp as well. I've chosen Merry Christmas this time. 
let's see, what else do we need? We need our foliage. So this is gonna add a really pretty festive feature to the front of your card and just make it feel super special. I've cut these smaller pieces from this one large piece. So again, just by buying this one piece, you're gonna get lots out of it. And then I'll show you the stamp that I've chosen. It's a pretty mandala shape. The nice thing about this one is there really isn't a top or bottom. So you don't have to worry too much about that. You can choose whatever design you like. If you wanna do some different ones across all of your cards, that works great too. Okay, so I think I've covered everything. You'll just need some tape, scissors, and a little bit of glue to assemble. So let me just clear things away. I'm gonna walk you through step-by-step step how I made this card. And first of all, I'll just tell you that I did pre-cut everything. For me, it works best if I have it all ready to go and I can um, get in the flow really easily and not have to worry about stopping and starting. Another thing that I did was I pre-stamped my white card. I am definitely not a great stamper, so this takes out a lot of stress for me. Um, if I make a mistake, it's fine. It's not on the final card. I can just start again and you keep going. Over to the side of that. Oh, Don't. yeah. Okay. All right, so we're gonna start. I've got my Buffalo plaid card. It is printed on both sides. Um, I'm gonna grab my double-sided tape and apply my craft paper. Now you will notice with this craft paper, it has two finishes. One side is a little more gray, and then the other side has a slightly more yellow tone, which I think works best with the envelopes that come with the card. So we're gonna go with that side. And just the same technique as Hannah on the other card. You don't need to go all the way around. You can just add pieces to the corners. And you could probably probably be a bit neater about this than I am right now. Okay, that should be good. All right, I love the design on here because it does help me to center it. So just try to get it more in this, as much in the center as you can. It's really forgiving. Okay, so you're, that's your first step. Then we're gonna take our white card that's already pre-stamped. So we don't need to worry about that. And you're gonna add your string that will act as the string of the ornament. So for this, just take a piece of tape again and you want to kind of tuck it over the top, trying to center it again as much as you can without feeling too precious about it. And again, this is the back, so don't worry about it being super neat. So that looks pretty good. And next we're gonna take our little ornament element. And I wanna just quickly show you what I did here for a little more ease. I pre-stamped my wax, and then I actually applied this little glitter square from our glitter paper to the wax stamp. And that was just using a piece of glue just ordinary craft glue like this. So I pre-stamped my wax stamps as another measure to avoid any potential mess ups when I get close to the end. But feel free if you wanna apply it directly on there. There's totally no wrong way to do it. So I wanna just eyeball where I want my ornament to sit. And I have this little piece of thread that's hanging below. So I'm going to secure it with a little bit of tape underneath, double check, and just trim off that little end piece. This is a little tricky just to get in there like that. And then we're going to take our glue and you really don't need too much to make sure this is open. I learned a phrase yesterday that a, a dot is a lot. <laughs> so I try to remember that because I know I've definitely made things like this before and glue will splurge out of the side. So 
just in a little dot. If it does spill out, it's not a problem because it does dry clear. So it's really not the end of the world. Okay, so I don't want to completely press it down all the way because I still have my foliage that I want to tuck in. So you want to have enough room that that will sit in. I just want to share to another little tip when it comes to cutting the foliage. This piece, you'll see there's a lot going on. It's kind of twisty. And although it looks pretty, it's not going to be the easiest to lay flat on your card. So we've gone ahead and cut it down even further just so it's nice and flat. It's still really effective and pretty. So I wanna just put another little bit of glue on the edge and carefully slide that in there. Oh, sorry, I think you all saw the top of my head. <laughs> <laughs> so some of my little berries fell off, but you can just reapply them. Actually, I'm gonna leave that because it might fall. All right, so once that is dry, which it isn't right now, but I should have applied the white card to the craft card before I showed you that. So I'm just gonna go ahead and place it on there because I don't wanna, I don't want everything to drop off. So that is your final card. I think it is a really pretty statement, but there's one more thing that I wanna do which is apply our ribbon. So I've pre-tied these, again, another just a little time saver tip and I've cut them down to size. And here I just use another tiny little blob of glue. And you can go right up to the top or you can come down a little bit if you want, just to show your string at the top. And that should complete it. So I hope you are all feeling super inspired to go out and buy some wax and have fun and get creative with it. You absolutely don't need to use the same colors that I did. You can buy a selection if you wanna just um, have fun and make it your own. So I know you've been asking a lot of really great, great questions and I would love to hear if you have any more. We still have some time to stay online. So go ahead and ask more questions. Does anyone have anything to share online with us? Yeah, so maybe one thing that you, you'd like to, sh is there something you'd like to share? Projects that you've done in the past, using wax stampers, we'd love to hear what you've been up to. I'm seeing some typing coming through. Lots of great comments coming through. Yeah. Lots of gorgeous, um, but super easy and fun. It's super easy, it's really fun. Um, I was new to wax stamping before I started this project and it did take me a few times to practice, but it's all part of the fun and I would say just set aside some time someday um, that you have to yourself and um, just see what you can do. It's really not as intimidating as maybe some of you might think. Okay, I think we are all set. Thank you again for joining us. Um, we're at Gartner Studios. We hope to see you again here at the studio for another class in the future. Thank you.